So this weekend, we have Packers versus Vikings. The Vikings coming off a massive win against the 49ers. I did not see that one coming. And the Packers now losing three straight games, falling to the Broncos, who had the worst defense in the NFL. And right now, when you look at the Packers, there's no doubt there's plenty of issues going on here. When you look at the offense, almost nothing is going right. We can't run the ball. We're having trouble passing the ball. We can't get off to any kind of start in the first half. I've barely scored in the first half in the past few weeks. And so now the Packers come in and face a Vikings team that has to be feeling pretty good about themselves. They just beat a team that I think many see or at least saw recently before the loss as one of the best teams in the NFC. You could also you know, say they're one of the best in the NFL overall. And that was without Justin Jefferson, probably the best receiver in the NFL at the current time. Without Justin Jefferson, the Vikings were able to beat the 49ers. So straight away, um, it's going to be a tough matchup for the Packers because you know, you would have thought the past few games, playing the Raiders, playing the Broncos, if the Packers were going to win a game at that point, you know, those were those were seemingly winnable games because those aren't great teams. And so now a Vikings team that at least is coming off a big win is probably going to be a pretty tough task for the Packers. And, you know, looking at this Packers offense, I think one of the, the biggest concerns in my mind is, you know, when I look at how I thought the Packers would play coming into the season, I did think we'd have a solid offensive line and solid running game. And we actually have had a pretty solid pass blocking unit. If you look at Packers pass block win rate per ESPN, second in the NFL. And if you look at Packers uh, PFF pass blocking grade, they rank seventh in the NFL. So they've been pretty solid when it comes to pass blocking, but they have not been good whatsoever when it comes to run blocking. The Packers run block win rate per ESPN, 29th in the NFL. The Packers PFF run block grade, 25th in the NFL, which has led to the Packers having a 24th rush yards per game at 90.8 and 24th in yards per rush at 3.8. And so a, a area of this team of this offense where I thought there'd be a strength has been a weakness. And so when you don't have a running game and you know Jordan Love can't have that to sort of take some pressure off, it makes it that much harder to pass the ball on the field when the defenses know that they're going to be able to stop the run. And so I think that's one issue that has obviously hurt this team, and it was an area where I thought the Packers would be pretty good uh, in 2023. But the offensive line, run blocking has not been good. And so, so far the past few games, honestly, nothing has really been going well for this offense. We've somehow found some things work to work in the third and fourth quarter, but it's been too little too late. And so for Jordan Love, you know, we're now six games into this season, and we need to see a change. And if the Packers keep playing as they have the past few games, it's going to be tough. Uh, even against this Vikings defense, who played pretty well against the 49ers. If we look at that game, the 49ers were missing some top players like Debo Samuel, Trent Williams, I believe. But the Vikings were able to hold the, the 49ers rushing attack to only 65 yards on three yards of carry. They held Christian McCaffrey to 15 carries of 45 yards. So if the 49ers, who I think are one of the best teams, running teams in the NFL, couldn't move the ball against the Vikings, it does make me concerned considering the Packers rushing attack has not played well uh, this season. And if we look at some Vikings defense, their stats, currently they're the 20th ranked scoring defense in the league, 15th in rush yards allowed per game, third in pass yards allowed per game, so a really solid secondary. And it's interesting looking at the Vikings, it's sort of, you just sort of, it's an example of how quickly things change in the NFL, where just a few weeks ago before they won their past two games, Lots of people, including myself, were thinking, well, maybe they should trade Kirk Cousins, get some draft capital, you know, prepare for the future. And now they're sitting at three and four, one win away from 500, and they have to be feeling pretty good and somewhat confident about their prospects for the rest of the season. Maybe they're a wild card team, and if they play as they did against the 49ers, they're going to be a pretty solid NFC team. And one thing I do wonder about this Vikings team is, was that just like a one-off performance? Because sure, it was great. They played really well. Kirk Cousins threw four like 300-something yards. Jordan Addison, Addison, rookie, had a big day, seven receptions, 123 yards, two touchdowns. But I just wonder if this is something that the Vikings can keep up because early in the season, they were playing some really close games um, against the Chiefs. They only lost by seven, but still uh, losing that one. And if we look at some of the other close games the Vikings had um, so far this season, they barely beat the Bears a week before beating the 49ers. And then they beat the Panthers by a touchdown. They lost to the Chargers by four, lost to the Eagles by six, lost to the Buccaneers by three. So well, I'm not I'm I'm not quite ready to say, you know, the Vikings are like one of the best teams in the NFC after beating the 49ers, but I do wonder if they can keep this up the next few games, then I'll be more convinced. But I do wonder, was that just a one-off great performance? Who knows? Um, but all in all, 
for the Packers offense. If we play as we had against this Vikings defense, it's going to be tough sledding. But I just hope that Jordan Love can, you know, get back to being more confident in the pocket. Because it felt like the first few games, Jordan Love seemed pretty in control of the offense. Uh, he seemed pretty confident. And I feel like the past few weeks, at least to me, it's it seemed like he's he doesn't look like he is in much as much control as he was in the preseason in the first couple games. So I don't know if that's confidence. I don't know um, exactly what's going on with the Packers offense. There's just been really no solution so far, and I hope that we see something happen this next week. And now if we move to the other side of the ball with the Packers defense, who against, you know, the past the past few games, the defense has played pretty well. Pretty good against the Raiders. Pretty good against the Broncos. I really think it was the offense that held us back. The defense played well enough for us to win those games. But the Vikings, I would have thought without Justin Jefferson, would still be a team that would be struggling. But their win against the 49ers did slightly change my mind. And Jordan Addison had a monster day. And so right now, the Packers are pretty thin at cornerback. Jair has missed some games. Jair Alexander, dealing with an injury, may or may not play this weekend. Carrington Valentine was filling in for him. Didn't play very well. The Broncos were definitely picking on him in the first half last week. Lots of plays to Cortland Sutton, who Carrington Valentine was guarding. And so, um, you know, typically with Jair out there, I would be a little more confident against this Vikings passing attack. But with Carrington Valentine out there, out there who was somewhat inconsistent last game, this may be tough uh, because the Vikings, even outside of Jefferson, who's on the IR currently, Jordan Addison's played great, and also TJ Hawkinson this past game at 11 receptions for 86 yards. Luckily, the Vikings do have one of the worst rushing attacks in the NFL. Um, they're, where's the stat I was looking for? They are currently third in pass yards in game per game, but 30th in rush yards per game. So they're not very good at running the ball, which against the Packers, um, if the Packers defense continues to play as they have against the run, the Vikings would have success this game. So let's hope the Packers can find a way to stop a running attack. Um, the past you know few games, they've been okay, but not incredible. And anytime we face more top tier rushing attacks, they, they, fa- they play a lot better. But I think this is going to be a close game. And I'm just going to say the Packers barely pull this one out. It is at home. So that is at least a positive. The Packers have lost three in a row. I think we need to get a win. It's going to be close. It could be a tough matchup if the Vikings play as they did against the Niners. But I'm going to say this is going to be a somewhat tight game at Lambeau Field. Um, Let's go Packers 24, Vikings 21. That is my prediction. Let me know your prediction in the comments down below. And if you want more Packers content, feel free to subscribe to the channel.